All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what I want to talk about so far in this class, uh, or so far in this chapter, we've just talked about vectors, right? And we talked about the magnitude. Now, one of the most important things I talked to you about, Brittany, was I said that vectors have a magnitude, which is like their length or the force being applied to them, and they have a direction, right? But we haven't talked about direction yet, OK? We haven't talked about any kind of direction yet. Um, the only thing we've talked about is that magnitude. Now, we ended last class period talking about a very, very special type of vector called the unit vector. And Michael, do you remember why that unit vector was very special? No. Fish, do you remember why that unit vector was special? Lucas? I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with the unit vector's magnitude. Yes? The magnitude is 1. The magnitude was 1, right? And what was so sp why is that so important? Because what else had, when we had the magnitude of 1, it will fit on the unit circle. And today, I'm going to use the unit circle on how we're going to be able to uh, understand what exactly um, the angle is and the direction of vectors are compared to our unit circle. All right. So one little quick thing. Let's just take a look at a random vector. Let's call that vector 2, 3. OK? Just a nice little random thing. So let's go and graph 2, 3. That's a vector. So we know, uh, I'll do it like this. No, I want something big. Um, let's do 2, 1. Sorry, I'm just trying to make up a vector. So if here's the unit circle, right? And then if I have a vector 2, 1, 1, 2, up 1, you guys can obviously see that that vector is not on the unit circle, right? Correct? But what we found out is we said, all right, how do you convert a vector then to a unit vector? So this is one of the formulas that we went over. And let's call this v. If I wanted to find the unit vector, all I need to do is take v divided by the magnitude of v, right? And this was something you guys had to do in your homework. Find that unit vector, OK? And when you did that, Let's see, this would be the square root of 5, right? Magnitude, do you guys remember the magnitude? Uh-oh, we have getting some stare faces. The magnitude, remember, was v1 squared plus v2 squared. So in this case, when I do this problem, I get 2 comma 1 all over square root of 5, OK? So who stole my calculator? So here's how we'd find the magnitude, right? So it's going to be v1, which is 2. 2 squared is 4. Plus 1 squared is 1. So 4 plus 1 is 5. The square root of 5 is just going to be the square root of 5. And therefore, this is old stuff. That's why I'm kind of going through this quickly. So therefore, we have 2 over the square root of 5, comma 1 over the square root of 5. Now the reason, again, this is for the unit vector, right? That we call u or another name or so forth. But I just want to show you guys something real quick, just to remind you. 2 divided by the square root of 5 is approximately 0.89, all right? And 1 divided by the square root of 5 is approximately 0.44. If I was going to try to roughly estimate those, I have 0.89, which is like over here, and then 0.044, which is right there. So you guys can see, right, because of that, here's 1 and here's 1, right? So you guys can see that the unit vector, it keeps the same angle. But now it just makes it so the end coordinates, which is like crazy, right? Not coordinates we're used to on the unit circle. But those are coordinates for the unit circle. That point is now on the unit circle. OK? That's cool. Now, let's go and talk about, well, why is having something on the unit circle helpful? Because having it on the unit circle is now going to allow us to find our angles. So this was a little bit of review. Can I delete this now? So let's go back to another unit circle, which you guys would probably want to write down again. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, and let's do, Josh, 30, 45, or 60. Which one do you want to talk about? 60. So we have an angle. It's right here. We know at 60 degrees, theta equals 60 degrees. We know that this point is going to be 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Would everybody agree with me on this? This is review from chapter 4, right? 
Now, the way that I introduced, um, the way that we talked about this, was the reason why the unit circle was so important So the reason why the unit circle was so important was because you had a hypotenuse that was born. Okay? And what we went over is when you have a hypotenuse as one, on the unit circle, we can also create these triangles that are very special, which we call right triangles. And what was so important about these right triangles is we, that we said the tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent, right? Which in this case, is this vector 1 half comma square root, or this point 1 half comma, Jesus, which is square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half. Now, my apologies. I'm not talking about a vector. I'm not talking about a point here. I'm actually talking about a vector. So what I need to do is actually write this as a vector. Right? That's a vector now. OK? Does everybody agree with me? I'm writing as vectors. Not, we're not talking about coordinate points anymore. So the tangent of this is your opposite over your adjacent. So if I wanted to figure out what angle, what this angle is, right? Notice how I'm taking the second coordinate over the first coordinate. All of our coordinates, ladies and gentlemen, v1 comma v2, right? That's how we write a coordinate in component form. So would it make sense to you for any angle, for tangent of 60 degrees, for any angle, I can say the tangent of any angle is going to equal v2 over v1. Right? Any angle, opposite over adjacent, right? v2 over v1. So if you have a vector that's in component form, and I say what is the angle of that vector, all you simply need to do is say tangent of theta equals v2 over v1. Then to find theta, I know a lot of you didn't really like this because we didn't spend a chapter on it. But hopefully, since you guys had uh, the test of law of sines, law of cosines, you remember a little bit about finding the inverses. So this would be tan inverse of v2 over v1. OK? But it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Because we know that tangent is here, right? Now, this, the reason why the triangle is so nice is because we can now say that that's 1 half, and that's the square root of 3 over 2. Correct? Correct? Now, if I was going to ask you, Nathaniel, what is the cosine of 60 degrees? You would say 1 half. So is it OK for me to write 1 half is really the same thing as the cosine of 60 degrees? Are those equivalent statements? Yeah. So then you guys would understand that I can say this is equivalent statement as well. Those are equivalent statements. Right? Would you guys agree with that? Now what's something that's very important for you guys to notice is remember how I took tangent of this angle? I'm sorry, this is of 60 degrees, sorry. Tangent of 60 degrees equals this, right? But then what I did was I say, OK, well, tangent of any angle is v2 over v1, right? So now, what I want you guys to understand is let's say we don't know theta. If we don't know theta, well, what I want you guys to understand, if this is 6. If this is 60 degrees, then we know this distance is the same thing as cosine of 60 degrees. If this is 60 degrees, then we know this distance is sine of 60 degrees. So if we don't know this distance, is it OK for me to say it's just the cosine of that angle, though, and it's just the sine of that angle? Would that make sense? So whatever my angle is, that's cosine of that angle. That's the sine of the angle, right? Would you guys agree with that? Maybe? Kind of? So what's very important about this is now I can write a new vector. My new vector, rather than component form v1, v2, or using our v's, I can now also say this is cosine of theta times sine of theta. Okay? Now, and I'll explain why this is going to become important in just a second. So if we can write it in component form, we can also write it as a linear combination. Let's call this vector. 
V. So I could also say V equals cosine of theta times the sine of theta. And I could say V could also equal cosine of theta i plus sine of theta j. That's it written as a linear combination. All right. Now again, I'll explain why this is going to come important and so forth. But there's one problem that we have. There's one problem that we have. What is the magnitude right now of this vector? What is the magnitude of this vector? One, right? So the magnitudes right here are always going to be of one. So, but what happens if we get to a case where we need to represent a, a different magnitude? What we're going to do is we're going to treat the magnitude like a scalar, right? So here's my unit vector. But if I have a magnitude, if I'm, like, or if I'm provided a magnitude, um, or I don't know, v or of anything else, you can now multiply this by like your scalar of your magnitude. And again, I'm going to go through an example like this, where you can multiply a v. Here's the, all this is is the component form. Okay? Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about multiplying it when we need a scalar and when we don't need a scalar. Okay? Um, but that's at least the introduction. I got a couple more minutes left, so I'm actually going to help you guys out with